Again, my name is Dennis Ja, and this time I want to turn over to my guest co-host, Mr. Ansoni, who will take it away from me. Mr. Sia. Dennis, thank you. And we also want to say thank you to our listeners, especially those of you in cyberspace. Welcome and welcome to this special, special Wednesday edition on this platform focused on Liberia. Today, for our show, we have with us three outstanding officials of CDC USA, in person of Mr. Joe Jackson, Chairman Emeritus of CDC USA, Mr. Vani Saki, who is the Vice Chairman, I understand, for Administration, the Coalition for Democratic Change. And we have uh, a well-known full soldier of CDC, uh, Mr. Julius Banto, who is currently the Chairman of the Ross Island Chapter of the CDC USA. These three gentlemen have seen what the term a serious contradiction in a government that they help to produce and the fee that they owe it to the people they convince to vote for their government into office to give them good explanation about the things that are going on in their government that they are not happy with. And so we are happy to have them today. Uh, Dennis, be ready. This is going to be thrilling. Thank you to all our viewers across the globe. We want to say welcome to Focus on Liberia. Currently, the Coalition for Democratic Change is a ruling party in Liberia. And uh, we have members of the CDC that's a Coalition for Democratic Change across the United States. In the United States, they have formed themselves into the CDC USA. And uh, we have officials of the CDC USA who we are going to be speaking to tonight. And uh, as we introduce them, we have Mr. Joseph Jackson, Chairman Emeritus, Mr. Vani Saki, a former Vice President of EULA and also Vice President for Administration of uh, CDC USA. And we have the uh, Chairman for the Rhode Island Chapter, Mr. Julius Banto. Again, gentlemen, we want to say thank you so much for coming and welcome. Let me uh, start with uh, the Chairman Emeritus, Mr. Joe Jackson, to just give a brief introduction. Well, thank you, Mr. Uh, Gibson, and uh, the host, actually, for this great opportunity today. And Mr. C. Jackson, excuse me, Sam. We having some trouble with uh, his video there. So let me go to you, Mr. Saki. Thank you so much, Mr. Ja and your co-host. Again, I'm Mr. Vanity Rosaki. I joined the CDC in 2005 and froze my support in 2011 when the party leadership was given to Winston Tugman, understanding the constitution and responsibility of a president and vice president. I saw no reason supporting a ticket when the candidate who I thought and believe was the best choice to lead the country was the second on the ticket. I saw serial conflict in the future even when I won the election, so I decided to approach my support. Did not join the other political party until later on decided I went to Liberia, talked to a few other Liberians, got together and we gave breath to the Liberian Pro Democratic Party. After a few months, we realized that we were all the same folks on the same side, just with different, different, different locations. We decided to come together to form the Coalition for Democratic Change. And I currently serve as the chairman for the administration CDC USA. I want to say thank you so much for giving me the opportunity to be on your platform tonight. Thank you, Mr. Saki. Uh, Mr. Jackson, are you ready? Yes. Yeah. Okay, let's go to Mr. Jackson for his introduction. Yeah, oh, I think I caught it, but I, I said uh, thank you for this uh, invite. Um, my name is Joseph T. Jackson, the T is with Tama, Chairman Emeritus of the CDC USA. Thank you so much. Mr. Banto, I get some words from you. Okay, uh, this is Julius Banto. Are you getting me? Yes, sir. Okay, uh, I've been with the Congress for Democratic Change since uh, 2005. Specifically, I work with the now chairman, Mubake Mulu, at the time he was chairing mobilization recruitment membership. And uh, I participated in the 2005 election, participated in the 2011 election, working with mobilization recruitment membership. 
And then uh, I came to the United States in 2012 and I joined the TDC USA. And up to now, I've been in full support of uh, the, the political manifesto of the CDC to ensure that uh, we produce the president, which we have already done. And as we speak, I'm the chairman for uh, the Rhode Island chapter, CDC USA. Thank you, uh, folks in cyberspace. We are about to go into serious business. That was the voice of Julius Banto, who has been with the CDC since 2005. Gentlemen, information recent focus on Liberia says that you have concern about why you term as serious contradiction. At this point, what we will do is for each of you to give an overview of the series of serious contradictions that you see in your government. We will let Judas Banto this time to go first. Mr. Banto, can you give an overview of why you term as serious contradiction in your government? Oh, yes, uh, as we speak, uh, if we look at Hello? Okay, yeah. Go ahead. Uh -huh. Okay. The formulation of a political party is based upon agreement. People who, people who came together and agreed to foster a common, a, a common goal, to support a common dream, which we call political manifesto. And it is based upon that we, we join the CDC as members because we support the dream, we support the political agenda to, to succeed and move our country forward. Uh, now here are the contradictions. I strongly believe and uh, that CDC as a political party, which is the Congress for Democratic Change, before coming to the full election, I strongly believe that uh, we have competent and qualified physicians who, when we take state power, can steer the affairs of the state, can steer the affairs of the government to ensure that our political manifesto is manifested in the lives of the Liberian people. What do I mean? We have few pillars that we want to work on, we want to provide our leadership on. So based upon the pillars, the, 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 the government, the party decided to come together and to see how best they can contest elections and when they win elections so that they can make their dreams to come to fulfillment. All right. So I strongly believe that we have competent and qualified solutions. You know, let's go to the coalition. After we we participated in two different elections, the 2005 and 2011, knowing for the world that we cannot win as a single political party, we decided to emerge with other political parties to ensure that we win the election. And as God who has it, we were able to emerge with two other parties. As my brother Vani, my Vani, my brother Vani just said, and he's also part of the coalition for the other party and the National Patriotic Party. So those two parties that we merge will also come with competence, with qualified people who are part of the coalition. All right. And, and when we win the election, it's about time that we do our own vetting from within our institution, from within our party, from within the coalition to ensure that we put the best people into strategic and best position. Because if we have our best in front, if we put our best in front, the government will succeed. You know, the government should be a government that will be result driven. Now today we see in the CDC-led government, people who really don't support the dream of this party, people who went against the coalition, people who never wanted to see President George Mann and we are president. Those are people today that are in government. And I can say for free to tell you say that it is not only the, the CDC, the Congress that is affected. The National Patriotic Party is also affected. The other party too, which my brother Vani is part of, is also affected. Most of the people are not in government. And we can see that you all were doing that most of our ministry agency are still flooded. We well, see very poor that we battle for 12 years. So where is the change? You have our foreign our foreign service, the whole foreign ministry. The Minister of Foreign Affairs is from the opposition. The Deputy Minister of Foreign Affairs is from the opposition. You know, the internal affairs minister is from the opposition and very ministry agency. You know, so I strongly believe that it is not a change that we fought for, but to just uh, give it a shot, you know, or, or face lip. 
I want to say clearly that there were I had the contradiction, so, so as to give my question the test. Because if you want me to explain, I will go on. And no, on, we will on. come to that, uh, Mr. Banto. We only want you to we want you to give your overview of the contradiction that you see in the CDC okay, government. So I have the contradiction is the formation the formation of the government. Most All of right. our qualified people are not in government. Thank people you. that are supposed to put the put the agenda of of the coalition for democratic change are not in government. Thank you. And we'll go to the formation when we come to the detail. Uh, Chairman Jackson, Chairman Emeritus of CDC USA. What are the contradictions that you see? I mean, we want an overview, a brief statement that will summarize some of the contradictions that you see in this government, maybe that you want to see corrected. Thank you. Um, thank you again for this great opportunity. Before I start with this uh, whole interview, let me first of all, acknowledge uh, His Excellency, Dr. 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 I call him successful Josh Manin Weir, uh, our standard bearer uh, from the coalition, and now our president uh, of the Republic of Liberia for his um, for the great job that he has done thus far in the Republic of Liberia. I have seen, I have been to Liberia so many times, I have seen a lot of great development because of his love for the country Liberia. Uh, he has traveled outside the country. He has seen a lot of good things because now that he has the opportunity to be president of the Republic of Liberia, he wants to bring in the development, um, which we'll be talking about later on on the show. I want to commend him for that. Now, my purpose of being on the show tonight is to explain or to vent up my anger and my frustration, my disappointment in the president for not bringing on board the qualified citizens. Those who share their blood for this party, those who were insulted, those who were called names by the opposition, and they all are sitting on the sideline today and we see the opposition, the very people who insulted us, call us names, are today benefiting our fruit that which we labor for, being given out to people who do not deserve what they are benefiting today. And those who deserve it, they are not being called on board. Now, I know we will be going into the detail, but let me just touch on this very quickly and then give you the space so that we'll be able to expand on this. First of all, we got to understand what is a government and what is a leadership in the government. Yes, and this notion, or should I use the word, this uh, fallacy by the president coming out every time he get opportunity to speak in the public or in an open space to always throw this on our face that hey, this government is not a CDC-led government. Um, it, it, it pains me, you know, it hurts me because if I look up, if I reflect back and see the sacrifices that many of us make in this party, you know what I mean? And today, uh, we've been told that, hey, this government is not a CDC government, then some of us, it doesn't go well with us. Because yes, indeed, Mr. President, this government is the government of the Republic of Liberia. But the leadership, the leadership of this government is the CDC-led government. So when I talk about CDC, I'm calling the agony, I'm talking about the coalition, that is the Mante Coalition, the NDPL, and the ALPD, the three political parties that came together. So you, you're going to hear me talking most of the time using the agony CDC. I'm not only referring to the Congress. I'm referring to the entire uh, combination of political parties that came together. You understand me? So the leadership the leadership that are in this government does not represent the coalition. And this is where some of us are having a problem because we are still receiving insults from these very people that initially, from the beginning, to us, they hey, you guys are wasting your time because at the end of the day, we will be enjoying the fruit. And everything they told us is happening today. But like I said, as we go deep, 
deeper into this conversation. Yeah. Or you want to expand it, but I just gave you the definition and I try to make some clarity over here. The government or uh, the difference between the government and the leadership that uh, we find ourselves in today. Thank you, Chairman Jason. Thank you very much for pointing that out. We will now go to uh, Vice Chairman for Administration for the Coalition for Democratic Change, uh, Mr. Vani Saki. Vani, we will appreciate an overview, if any, uh, in terms of contradiction, <clears throat> excuse me, that you see in this government. Thank you so much, my dear brother. Tonight, I will want to be honest and inform you that I will speak as a politician. I hope you understand it from that point. Because sometimes we don't understand when politicians speak, we say it passes. Understanding politics and understanding what political institutions are, I want to point, I want to quickly point out two clear contradictions since the formation of the government and since the president took office on January 22nd, 2018. One, the formation of the government was a complete contradiction to the institution policy, the institution values, the institution principle, and the platform the institution ran on, and the agreement that brought that gave breath to the coalition. One. Two, the recent statement made by the president in which he drew a clear line between the government and the institution that gave breath to the government, I see as a serial contradiction. I will propound more as we move forward. Thank you very much. So folks, in cyberspace, space, as you follow us, we are about to go into the details of all the contradictions that these gentlemen see happening within uh, the CDC government. We, in, in this section, it will be a little more interactive. So I will be coming to you back and forth so that we can get more from you. We have four segments. Number one, we will look at the formation and composition of the government. What are the contradictions you see there? And then after that, we'll go to good governance and the rule of law. What are the contradictions that you see there? Because we know as a political institution, you have principles, you have policies, and you have pillars you know, that are in line with good governance. We'll be asking you if you see any contradiction for you to point them out. We'll also look at accountability and transparency. What are the contradictions that you see? And last but not least, we'll be looking at the last segment which will be promises and policy position that were made at the time you were in your political wilderness or in opposition that are not happening today or that you do not hold today. So number one, we will start with uh, Chairman Jackson. Chairman Jackson, you produce a government. You fought so hard. Today, you have the thing in your hand. Let's look at the formation of the government. Do you see the way your government been formed as in line with the way you have imagined or a vision of you have discussed it to be? Did you see that? Um, I would say no. Uh, and I, I would say no to that uh, question, um, Mr. Moderator. Um, and that's why uh, the disappointment for some of us, you know, come in. Because when we were in the opposition, we criticized uh, the ruling uh, establishment at the time, which happened to be the United Party. And uh, most of their officials that were in government, I use the word most, because not every one of them, uh, they were very corrupt. And uh, uh, for 12 years, those people brought hardship to our people, the early Justin Salif. Um, administration received over $16 billion from the international community. And we are, some of us are yet to see any of that or any of those funds being, you know, shown or in Liberia. You can see the tangible of those of, of those funds. Our people are still suffering. And um, the contradiction to me here was that coming in and not seeing citizens, and I see citizens being appointed to strategic area brought a serious problem to the formation of this government. If you can remember in 2017, when we took over, uh, there was a lot of um, leakages that was coming out from the government agencies and ministry. Why do you think all those things were going on? Because those people that was in position or that stay in position, maybe some of them have been changed now, I don't know, uh, it was because they were not loyal to the cause. You know what I mean? They were not loyal to the cause, so therefore, most of those secret information were just being placed all out there in the hands of the media 
and everybody could just handle a copy and just come up. Yeah, oh, Chairman oh, Jackson, oh, 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 before, oh, before, oh, before you continue on there, Chairman Jackson, hold on right there. Let's look at the vetting process. You know you are an institutional person. An institution, when a political institution in this case, upon winning election, they got to be vetting process, all right? It's the vetting process that decide who goes here and there. Was that done? Or was there something that was done on a friendship basis? Uh, well, I would say no, it, it wasn't done because we thought we thought that was the, the right that um, was going to be taken. That is, we're going to vet our qualified citizens, those that are qualified, and we we'll put them into strategic area. Unfortunately, that process was thrown out of the door. And now it became, uh, who know you, uh, it became a friendship basis. People were being appointed, and there are some friends in government right now that I know. They actually they literally fought to get some of these positions because they felt they felt so bad that hey, if we sit here and allow these things to go on and we, you know the way they're doing it, somehow we're not being government. And I'm not gonna call names yet, you know, for personal reason, you know. But, but most of these guys have to fight for their own job, you know. So no, uh we did not go through the uh, regular process that we had in mind that they're doing the betting, the CDC USA. Coming over late because I'll give you an example. When our own chairman, chairman Emeritu or Arthur Zakama was in Liberia, he has a list. A list that he vetted from the CDC USA, and those people were the one that um, that he deemed at the time were qualified or bona fide member of the CDC USA to be absorbed into the government. And that list were given, unfortunately, they were just thrown up and thrown out of the door. And that list, I will tell you, nobody from that list. Like Chairman Zagaman gave, when caught into the government up to this time. So, no, the appointment here is based on I know you, you're my friend, and your connection with certain people in government. Mr. Mr. Jackson, and any of you can uh, answer this. Is it is it uh is it about qualified people being in government or is it about sedition being in government? What, what's the main issue here? Yeah, let me ask the, the, main, the main issue here is about qualified sedition being in government. You know, let me say this. All citizens cannot be in government. And I will say this, and people that are listening to me uh, know this very well. I had 19 years, and my, my, my good friend and brother there knows me very well. I had 19 years experience with the United Airlines. I started with Continental, now with uh, uh, United Airlines. OK? I was not fortunate to be in government. And I'm still not fortunate to be in government. I am qualified to be at the airport. I'm qualified to be at the aviation. You have men like Nukwe, according to the policy of the aviation over there, you must have 10 years experience to be in that position. You have Nukwe, who does not have even one minute experience in aviation, so they control our aviation se sector. So I would say that, look, I'm qualified to hold any of the positions, but I said it, and they all know about it, down to the president, but hey, I am not prepared. I'm not ready to go back to Liberia right now to work. I have a good job over here, you know what I mean? I got one more year to be qualified for my retirement, which is next year, September. I will be qualified for my retirement. At that time, I can make my decision whether I should leave the company or I should continue. Because based on my number of years of service and my age, I will be qualified next year. I will make that decision whether to leave or continue serving over here. But no, uh, we are not talking about absorbing all the citizens. We are talking about the qualified citizens, and we have many of them, you know, who are qualified today. And they're not in government. Thank you. And Thank you. We'll get to the detail when we when we get to that. Thank you. Uh, let me bring in. Can I add to what you just said? Okay, go ahead, uh, Mr. Banto. Yes. Okay. Uh. Uh, why it is truth that all physicians cannot and will not go into government. It is also true that in the formation of the government, we should first of all prioritize seditions before going out of the box. What do I mean? Say, for instance, you have Chairman Joseph Jackson, who have served with, who have worked with the airport here for all those years. You understand me? Because I got, I got in my door two days to the inauguration. 
And the president may think some of them for the past administration who never even wanted to see George Weah presidency. All right? What does that tell you? You have people in your own institution that have the competence, the qualification to get a job done. But you turn your back on your people and then you went back to the same very people who never wanted to see your president. You know what I'm saying? And then today, President, we are in sitting among people and saying that this is not a CDC led government. This is a Labyrinth people government. Tell me for tell me just for, for, for free here on this platform. It is all Liberian people that voted for one president or that voted for one candidate. People are elected based on their political affiliation. You keep for an institution. You keep for a, co a collaboration that brought you to the presidency. All right? So to stay in the midst of people and try to disconnect or disassociate the party that gave birth to the government, I think that's a big service to our many efforts, to our sacrifices that we have made over the years. You know, so let my brother say, sedition should not even call sedition. Not go. Sedition should be prioritized until when they are not qualified. Then you can go out of the bus. It is our government. It is us that gave birth to this government. Why not prioritize us? Thank you very much, Jesus Banto. Let me leave it there for now. Let go to uh, Vice Chairman Vani, the Vice Chairman for Administration, the Coalition for Democratic Change. We are still on the formation of the government. Uh, Mr. Saki, your coalition produced a government and as an institution, you need to be at the table to vent people as an institution to decide who is qualified for what position. Did that happen? Oh, uh, let me not give you a yes or no answer, but let me say this to you. That when I stated earlier that the, the, when, when, we were, when we were coming to establish the the coalition before the coalition was given birth to that I was not an in-house discussion as to how we're going to proceed. Mm -hmm. We are successful on the matter of boxes. We we're very, very clear in terms of agreement how we're going to succeed. Because three political institutions coming together, we have to make sure everyone's interest is protected. So we know there was an agreement made and we fought to make sure first we gave birth to the baby first, then we can decide how to name the baby, meaning how to form the government. You can't be forming the government with the election is not always not even here yet. So the moment after the election was heard, we started to see some differences. Now, when it comes to formation, I'm going to tell you about contradiction because one, a political party is a group of people who come together to form an institution. And, and in a political process, they put on a candidate. And if that candidate is successful at the battle box, the candidate take over leadership and do everything in his or her way to, 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 to to promote the party agenda, the agenda which the, 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 the president ran. In order to be successful in implementing the party agenda, the president will have to appoint people in government that believe in the party's agenda. So the formation is very important. Let me make it very clear here today as a politician. Sometimes I laugh when I see people saying, oh, you guys just fighting for job, just fighting for job. And let me say this to you. You think as two as opposition for 12 years with George Weah, to give birth to a government and be spectator in my own government, you think I fought to take over leadership so that all I can lead and I watch from the sideline? No. I stood at opposition for 12 years against the regime, against the regime because I believe that I was patient hoping to be part of a government that would transform our country and improve the lives of our people. I did not fought for 12 years to give birth to a government and watch other people lead. That's one of the reasons why you join political institution. I want to be part of a government as the people that share the same political philosophy that want to see the proper agenda succeed. So in the formation process, we will identify people that believe in the political ideology of the party that gave birth to the government. When we start to talk about government inclusion, they do not and then there's also some misunderstanding and calculations. You know, that's why I said our complete contradiction. I'm not saying again, let me make it clear for the record. I'm not saying from the sweeper to the president, but be all sedition. What I'm saying is sedition will be absorbed. It must be, be absorbed first in the government. Mm -hmm. yeah. Where you are absorbed, qualified, and competent citizens in government, and there are more opportunities of other people, you can bring them in. Because no matter what, our name, our images, our faces are tied to this government. We will laugh when the government succeed and will be crucified when the government fails. That's fine. You cannot divorce the government from the coalition of a democratic change. That's why I said I was the second contradiction when the president said. 
I can yeah. see what problem with the formation or 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 or, or since last year, they crown the president. Let sedition take over their government. Let sedition take over their government. Other people see it as, oh, you've been divorced. You don't understand. I'm a politician. I'm not speaking as a religious mayor. I'm not forming government inclusion here. I'm forming a government and rolling it with people who understand and believe in the agendas of the party that gave birth to that government. My brother, that's why I'm forming here. I'm not running church here. I'm not running some kind of charity organization. I'm running a political institution. And in order for that institution, in order for the government, that institution gave birth to succeed, that government must be loaded with people from the institution. Period. It's not being divisive. You in America, when Democrats take over, they load the government with the Democrats. When Republicans take over, Donald Trump is not going to not going to buy Republican and hire Democrats. That's a complete. That's, that's just a clear fact. That's politics. You hire people based on their ideology, what they believe in, what they stand for, what their values, and their values in line with your values. You cannot go win an election and, and load your government with opposition and think you're going to succeed in the name of government inclusion. We did not come for war that we need all world fashion to bring people to form a government inclusion. We fought for 12 years because we believe that we had a solution to the problem. In order to succeed in applying the solution, we must load our government with people who believe in the party's agenda. So the formation of the government was the breakdown of the whole system. When the president said, government inclusion, I knew that was a bad start. You cannot try to please everyone. I said to the president, man, my communication. I do not know the road to success, but the road to failure is try to please everyone. And that's why today we got a lot of issues in the government. That's why you see every time they, before they, before a letter can reach a president desk, it on the in the social media. Before yeah. you can hit the president desk, it on the, already in the public. Because you have people who do not believe in the government. And the president is trying to run the government and run your church. They can't work. Mr. My brother. Mr. Saki. Mr. Saki. Yep. Is the is the uh, is the government uh Winning or failing because they are no sedition. Let's say if the government is doing very well, does it matter if sedition there or not? Or are you saying because seditions are not, are not in the government or are not still in the government, so the government is having problems? Let, let me say, let me say, let me say this tonight very clear. I'm very, very proud of this government with in terms of performances. And let me maybe clear for the record. I'm not here tonight to tell you that. I'm disappointed in the performance of the government. I'm very, very proud. I know the challenges that were inherited on January 22nd, 2018. I know the give Mason January 27th, 20, 2018, Saturday 2018. I know the vision for the power the, the president has for the country moving forward. We still got sufficient time in our hands. I'm not here tonight to say I'm disappointed in performance. But because I'm not disappointed in performance, does not mean I don't have other issues that can strengthen my government to succeed. We are operating in time that we are giving amendment. I'm not going to wait for 2022 to start complaining. If the child needs to be spanked now so they can correct the correct, the correct the error so they can move forward faster, I will do that. We can be walking, but if I want to run, I can push the, I can push the child to run. Even though the child's walking, we're moving, but I want to move faster. So my argument here tonight is not based on the performance. No, I'm not dissatisfied the government is doing well. There are a lot of things the president has achieved since January 2018. The only reason you're not here, you're not here in this too much is because I control the inner set of people is that. Our, 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 our complication arm is not, is not adequately and consistently propagating government good news. So at the end of the day, the propaganda is against the government. Spread the bad news and you think that everything in the country is bad. We need yeah. to articulate the government agenda. Tell the Labrampo what the government inherited on January 22nd, 2018. Thank you, What are the achievements made and what are the challenges and what are we doing to overcome the yes. challenges? If we, we will get, get to that, that Vanny, let me for that. tell you that. Liberian will understand that we have done a lot in a short time, but people don't hear the good news. They hear one bad news and take over the whole country. And think Thank you, Vani. Thank you, Vani. We'll get to the details on the issue oh. of performance. And, uh, oh, yes, we'll yes, yes. I, I will Vani. See, can you please allow me to ask something to what my brother just said? We, uh, we I, was know come, we I was coming with a question, Banto. Okay, okay, go ahead. And, and, I, I, and I'll ask you that question, and then while answering, you can go to what you were planning to say. So, oh. this is your government. You are left two years into your government. Some of your friends are quiet. They're not saying anything. Like Vani said, maybe you have some time on your hand. Maybe that's why they are quiet. And so why are you here trying to point out some contradiction or express some dissatisfaction? Why can't you just bear patient and keep waiting? Maybe the press told you that uh, this is like a football team. There are people that are on a substitute bench. Maybe the people that are there, they are performing right now. That's why he's here to substitute some of them. So why are you here? Why you can't just wait? Let me respond to that question quick before Bandu come in. Okay. Let me, let me respond. We are not here tonight because we're trying to protect jobs. 
I'm personally here tonight because of the statement made by the president. As a politician, I know it is damaging for the institution. Yes. My concern for the institution is not in that, it's just not the six year. It's not the next government job. I'm an institutionalist. Thank you. I want the party to survive Thank after you. President We are. In order for that to happen, we yes. got to make a corrective measure are put in place on error at me. Yes. When the president who is giving breath to my institution, turn around and look at the faces of the policy and say the institution is different from the evidence, it's not the government, it's a problem. And I'm not here yes. because I'm trying to air my view so that the government, the president call me. A person in where you call me tomorrow morning, offer me a job. I am saying I'm asking the president to come back in the public, apologize yes. to sedition for the statement made. And retract his statement. Gave me government job will not take that statement away from the thousands of citizens who are living with a fear with the anger today that the president divorced the government for the institution. One government job is not going to we're not going to solve that problem. So Thank I'm not here tonight because of government, I'm here to protect the institution. Many yes. of the citizens are not happy because of the statement they are saying, Oh, we are sad that we gave birth to the child, and the child grows up and tells us that we are not the mom and we are not the dad. So that's why I'm here. I'm not here because I want to be patient so that they can call my name. The person can call my name tomorrow morning. I will not still be happy until I can be part of a government. I have a strong institution that will control give government to government, give breath to government. Thank you, Mr. Government. Saki. Mr. Saki, thank, thank you. you. Uh, Mr. Banto. Yes, okay. Uh, I want to make a specific reference to our statement. We are saying here that our government is engulfed with opposition. And so then when we say those things, we have to a little bit be, we have to be specific because people are also listening. So let me let me get a few ministry and agency. Okay, the Ministry of Foreign Affairs, the Foreign Service for on the Ministry of Foreign Affairs, Ministry of Internal Affairs, Ministry of Information, Ministry of Transport, Ministry of Lands and Mines and Energy, GSA, NSA, Robots International Airport, uh, Aviation Authority, LPRC, and the list goes on. All right. The de even the Deputy Minister of Foreign Affairs is just from the opposition that came and joined us. All right. What, 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 what we are saying here tonight is that it takes, for me, it is my belief, I stand by this belief, it takes seditions who stood by this president for 12 good years to make him succeed as president. Trust me, if we were, we were people, if we were failure, president, we are could could be president today. Guys that on the show, those of you that are listening, on that we were against 12 good years, to the extent that people who say we have arms and ammunition at the party headquarters, some of them today are in our government. Why competent and qualified seditions are out? So for me, the message here today is that I believe that without sedition, I believe that without sedition, that government will not be successful because the very opposition that are working with this president now, they are not satisfied. They criticize him. They never believe in his ability to lead. They say he will never be a good president. Tell me now, how can this work and seriously hard to make the same man who we criticized yesterday successful to the president? So look, there will not be something here. If this government fail, it is the CDC-led government out there. So it requires sedition. So sedition must be prioritized. We have qualified sedition. Why are they not occupying those areas? Look at the foreign missions. All right? Permanent mission, you have opposition. The embassy here, you have opposition. So are you saying to us that as an institution over the years, we don't, we don't build our own people? No. But the problem is, the president is the problem. And this is why some of us are taking the stand to come publicly and speak out. All right? Whether you give me a job or not, I don't care. It's about building institutions. Because look, I believe that if any country will be successful, it will come from the institutions you build. And today, it, it baffles my ima imagination to see people from the Manchester Executive Committee of the Coalition of Democratic Change. Up to now, they are not talking. I think we are on the right, we are on the wrong track, and we must speak out. Thank you, Mr. Banto. Let's go to uh, Mr. Jackson. Yeah, and we'll yeah, end yeah. Let me yeah, come Jackson. back. Let me come. Yeah, you continue uh, to emphasize. All of you continue to emphasize the need of qualified individuals from your institution to be represented a key position in your government. Because these are the people, if I can paraphrase you, who made promises, who convinced people that when you get elected to power as a political institution, you will deliver. 
do you have qualified individual? And for the record, do you not mind naming some of these individuals who you think are qualified? Because maybe the president doesn't see qualified individuals in your uh, political institution to fill those positions. That question is laughable, man. That question is laughable. But uh, I will give you the names if you want the names, you know. Uh, I, I try not to give names because I don't want to put people on the spot. Uh, but let, let, let me go back a little bit to the why. Especially, I know before the end of this show, there will be some uh, people that will be calling to say, oh, why Mr. Jackson is doing this? Because I, I resigned on April 24th. And when I resigned, I resigned as the national chairman for CDC USA. And I said, I have a uh, calling. I was going to serve uh, the almighty, which I am. I just came back from Indonesia. If you can see over here, my teacher from there. I just, uh, my bishop and myself just got back um, from uh, doing some missionary work. Now, the why. In every institution and history will prove me right. Not everybody that had the mind, not everybody that had the vision or the willpower to stand up and speak out. So my resignation brought a big dent within the CDC USA. There were many people who were not happy it's like every day I receive a call asking me to come back and take over the leadership of the CDC and I told the, the CDC USA and I told them no. Now, what made me to do this? I was in Indonesia and I was listening to the president when he made that uh, remark. And first of all, before I continue, let me also take this time to commend the brave men and women of the coalition who stood up and said that Bill Trary was not going to have his birthday party at the party headquarters. I think that's where the whole thing trickled off from when the president went to speak, I think, with that anger and he, he uttered those words. So I was in Indonesia when I began to receive those calls. Chairman, what are you people doing? We got nobody to speak for us. Can you please come back and stand up and speak for us because we know your, 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 your courage, we know how you can stand up when you say you're behind something. We know what you can do, you know? So immediately I got back, I had a meeting with a group of people and I said, okay, gentlemen. Mr. Jackson, we are pressed with time. We'll have other segments to go to. Do okay, you yeah, have okay. qualified yes. members? So, yeah, so yeah, I was trying to get uh, the why. So that's the reason that's the reason why I came back and that's the reason why I'm going to take on this fight because mm -hmm. the last time on the uh, on the Julian show I said I hey, if this president is saying that he is not a member of the CDC or the coalition then I will be contesting in the coalition primary that coming out as a standard bearer and I still stand by my statement. Now, yes, we do have qualified citizens over here. And like I said, I, I don't want to put people's name out there right now because it would not look good for me to do that. But there are a lot of names out there. There are a lot of people out there that are qualified. You know what I mean? If, 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 look, let's be honest here. Look at the uh, executive committee members. You, up to this time, you still have the vice chairman for the ruling party without a job. Are you telling me that this young man is not qualified to be in the government? Are you telling me that people like Ivan Toba, uh, what's his name, uh, Anton Sakama, uh, 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 are they not qualified? Is that what you're telling me? And, th and those are not only the names. We got a lot of young kids in this country. There are a lot of people, the Morris man we talk about today, this man have two masters under his belt. Are you telling me that this man is not qualified to serve as an auditor general? or to give you the opportunity to go at the central bank to work? This is a man with two masters. We have a, a, a lady who used to be our former chairman, Cecilia Paul. She has two masters, you know what I mean? In, 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 uh, in medicine, you know what I mean? Are you telling me that she's not qualified to, to be the chief medical officer of the Republic of Liberia? Are you telling me that people like Charles Koji that have a security background are they not qualified to be an operational man 
at the uh, NSA, we had people like James Halewanda. This is a man who served as a uh, training commander at the National Police Headquarters. And the president knows this man very well. This man was chased out of Liberia because he was supporting CDC at the same time working early Justice City government. Are you telling me that this man is not qualified to be an NSA director or, or immigration or police director? When you have an opposition serving in the National Police Service, the 101, as a deputy for administration, and, and this woman is denying and depriving citizens in this government. And these are the people that are creating problems for us. That identical lady that I'm talking about, the 101, and the Liberian National Police, a strong supporter of, of, of the United Party. And you got here over there today, and you got people like James Halewanga that were all this background. Are you telling me that Mr. Joseph Jackson, with 19 years experience in aviation, is that qualified? Is that what you're telling me? Are you telling me that Vani Saki was a graduate and qualified, experienced? You know what I mean? You're telling me that he cannot hold any position in the security uh, sector? We had Julius Banto here, who works with the, uh, uh, the Ministry of Foreign Affairs. Today, you're looking for passport director. Are you telling me that this man is not qualified to hold his position? No, let me say this here, and I'm, trying, I'm not trying to be arrogant here. If you look at the history of our political setting, and I challenge anybody on, on the show or after the show, the comments of Mr. Dyson, what you make, I mean, the statement you make there was not true. From the back of my time, the Amos Sawyer, the uh, Tipo Ted, the uh, Ellen Johnson Sully, who brought war into our country and killed over 250,000, today, nobody went on the street to demonstrate against this woman here. Today, we are heading out to be the best or willing for her to come back so she can kill more people. You know what I mean? I challenge you. From the 70s to the 80s, from the time the CDC came into being, there is no qualified. We got more qualified CDCs than those days. Because today you have the opportunity for people to go to school. There are many CDCs that want to school. All of our coordinators in Montserrado County, all Thank of them, you. I say all of them, they are all college graduates. Are you Thank telling you, me Mr. that all Jackson. these people are not qualified to be in the government? Are you Mr. telling Jackson, me that all the coordinators you. for Bond County? All the coordinators for Bond County that have college degree, they are not qualified to be in this government? Mr. Jackson, let me leave it there. Thank you. Let's move to the next segment. Uh, we have the other segment here is good governance and the rule of law. In good governance, we we'll talk about your human rights record. Yeah, Dennis. Okay, if you are just joining us, this is focused on like we are discussing the serious contradictions as stated by members of. CDC USA, some officials of CDC USA who see some contradictions in government, and that's why we are discussing tonight. So, if you want to be part of the discussion, please call. Our number is being posted on Facebook. The number is 605 313 6004. The code is 791403. Back to you, Mr. C. Thank you, Mr. Jared. And uh, folks in cyberspace, we are moving to the next segment in our conversation here with these three officials of CDC USA, and that will be governance, good governance and the rule of law. For good governance, we're looking at your human rights record. We're looking at um, how you are governing the country, we're looking at the image of the country, how you are following the laws in the land in terms of, of honor or the rule of law. They, they, they are laws on the books that as a government you need to follow so that your government can be seen as a law abiding government. So for the rule of law, we will be asking you guys whether you see some contradiction. Uh, one of the things that have to do, on a rule of law, we have security, justice, and all that. So I will start with the issue of justice on a rule of law. The CDC, I know for a fact, just like many Liberians, advocated for the war crime court. Your position, the time you were in, your position was very clear. But what seems to be now is that that has changed. Or in other words, you are playing politics with the issue of the war crime court. You guys told casters in Monrovia. And my understanding is that that caster represented the 250,000 people that were killed. And today we don't have a definite, a definite position 
from the CDC. Your president is not making what I consider a serious strike on the implementation of the war and economic crime courts. I will start with you, Vani. Thank you so much, my dear brother. Thank you for that quick question. Let me say it very clear to you today that if you set me around the table tonight to advise the president of war crime court, I will tell you I'm deeply concerned about the security environment. You are you are on mute, Vanny. Okay, good. Sorry, yeah, yeah. someone recording me. Let me repeat. If you put me around the table tonight with President Weir and, and, okay. uh, and ask me to advise him honestly on what kind of I will look me ask and tell you that I got zero concern when it comes to the security environment. I think we do not have the security environment for war crime code. Let me go back to the record. We were the ones advocating for war crime code for the past 12 years under the United Party government. When our security sector was in the hands of foreign troops, quite equipped militarily, everything to protect the fragile peace. At the time, the other on the left saying that reconciliation is the best way forward. And you know what? Liberians demonstrated at a higher level that reconciliation is the best way forward. And the evidence are clear and undeniable. You stood in Queens and you voted for people who financed the bloody civil war that destroyed more than 250,000 lives and destroyed properties. You voted for the war, the chief architects of conflict in our country, Manuel L. Johnson Sleep. You did not stop there. You voted for lawmakers who created, who committed mayhem in our country. That was a clear sign and signal to the international community that yet indeed, Liberians are using the power of reconciliation or power over the power of justice. So it was clearly convincing. We were there in the vanguard advocating that people who committed crime there should not walk away free. They should be brought to justice and they should be, they should be dealt with under the law. People said reconciliation was the best way for. We did not just say it, but we demonstrated in our action to the ballot boxes. Now, right after the army left, turning over the country to a government that is having a, a terrible economy and a book out in a book system would have would have would have complete disorganized security for our brothers who were telling us at the time that peace and reconciliation is the best way forward, took the street and said we want war crime code. In the presence of no security, when the villages in town are very good anything, the economic situation is bad where people can be easily manipulated to do anything by those guys who are considered as generous, who still control some of these things. When I sat and watched people, when the when the when the, when the House of Representatives decided to impeach Cabinet Janet, I saw how the country was turning into people taking the street to protect, to protect their own Jesus Christ. I said to myself, what will happen when the World Crown Court is that the first of the general tomorrow? The whole country will turn chaotic. Everybody will start protecting their own generals. Everybody in the country was asking my owner general was a good general. He was he joined to, to protect my village. He joined to protect my town. And look at the security forces we got today. The country will be vulnerable to anything. So I'm deeply concerned. And I said to the president, this environment is not conducive from the security standpoint. They fought from the other side. For me, they are playing politics. They are not actually standing up for justice. What they are fighting for is to, to politically strong the government, create an environment where it will be chaotic, and you will not able to focus on your agenda at the end of the day. After six years, they will come back here, loaded with political argument to say, we told you that, we told you that he was not ready to leave, and you saw happy. I'm Mr. saying Saki. to you, I stand Mr. for Saki. justice. Yes. Let me hold you there. At the time you were advocating for the war crime code, these variables that you have just enumerated, you did not see them? Honest, I go back to my argument. The variables were there. Why are you concerned about more than 15,000 United Nations troops that were on the ground with military equipment ready to protect and respond yeah. to anything in our country? Were well, you not also concerned about that? You did not see the yeah. one thing. You did not see the equipment of our road, our country? Are you concerned today that you yeah. see police officers moving in the street with no weapon? What make a man, I'm from, I'm from the security background. You know what make a security man powerful? It's not the uniform, it's the arms you carry. Look at your police officer. How, what, do you have a 911 system with something breaker in our country overnight? You don't even have it. People are living on the masses of God. People are just living by the grace of God. So you, the environments were there, but it could do, the environment was conducive. Are you concerned the kind of environment? Authority, the economy is start to everything. The security, the security is start to the economy. You have a country today where people better take pay. Are you asking us to set a war crime code and start prosecuting? When we decided to remove Kavina Janet from the Supreme Court bench, what a man will think that Kavina is supposed to preserve. Some of you was on the street again saying, no, Kavina Janet should not move. If there's a one guy, just tell me tomorrow yeah. when we indict the first and, and, and of the Vani and Yeh, Kavina Janet were removed and Labura did not go back to war. So what makes you think that when you bring the war crime code, Labura will go back to war if that is one of the... Uh, 
I'm not saying I'm not actually I'm not actually predicting war. I'm 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 predicting I'm, I'm predicting I'm predicting an environment that will that will stimulate the president for focusing on the pro war agenda yes. for for for, for yeah. development. It will undermine his ability to focus on the agenda. You can't have a country where people are in the street every day. You have in the run. You know what happens when people protest every day in the country? A strong government operation and deny government for generating adequate resources for 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 for, for, for function. Yes. So you're talking about just cabinet general alone, and you saw how the environment how the environment was a whole week. Every time people in the street was standing black in the street and they started, tell me tomorrow you indict the first fifty generals. Fanny, and in tell me what I'm going to tell you. Fanny, hold it there. In any political space, when a leadership is taking a tough decision, people will question that decision. But when the leader knows, or when that leadership understands that they are making the right judgment, they should not fear the noise in the street. A case is the cabinet general issue. You are right. Liberians, as, as far as I can remember, some of them protested. People condemned the decision. But the government felt that for cabinet general to be on the bench, why it is true that other people said it was politically motivated, but your government went ahead and did that anyway. And Liberia is still a stable country in terms yes, of security. Yeah. Yeah. So why make you think that when it comes to the war crime code, it's going to uh, be different? Can I, can I come in? Yeah, can I come in? Can I come in? Can I come in? Can I come in? Can, can, can right. I come in? Can I come in? Yeah, you in and then Banto. Yeah, you know, you know uh, sometimes I, I, I don't like to continue to use these words on all because there are a lot of good people about you find a lot of hypocrites among us as Liberian. You know what I mean? And Mr. Saki just, I mean, lay out exactly what I wanted to say out here. But just to add up to what he just said. And I don't know how you want him to explain this, because he said it was just one person, Abena Jani. And remember, if you are going to have about 50 generals of people like Prince Johnson, who killed thousands of people over there, was going to be brought to to court. Where that country was going to be, the whole country of Lima County was going to be behind to support him. So that's where he coming from with his example. But look, the whole thing about the whole uh, war crime court, I think it's a, it's a joke. My parents and I read it because I remember when, when, when CDC was in the opposition. Today I see people coming on and say, "Oh, CDC, CDC, the same thing you used to do, and uh, well, we're doing all your complaint." Yes. It was CDC as a political party, was the only political party that stood up against the ruling establishment, which was the United Party. There was no other political party came to our aid. We called for a war crime code. Everybody said, oh. Chairman Jackson, I think Vanny said that, but let me, let me, let me, let me ask you about the politics. Let me ask you about the politics of the war crime code. Let me ask you about the politics. The yeah. politics here is that in your political institution, your political leader, or the president playing the politics, you want the support of Prince Johnson. Prince Johnson no, will come in. Prince Johnson's support help to give you the presidency. Ellen Johnson's support help to give you the presidency. Oh no, I disagree These are with your Ellen. political benefactors. And so how can Liberian trust your position against the individual when it comes to justice? Well, OK. So that's what we're saying here to you. Why is it that the Liberians today, and I like the response the president gave for them when he came back from the, uh, from the UN. You say you want a war crime code. Now, I think you go in there. I present a case to them now. They're going to bring the war crime code. But what we're saying here to you tonight is, hello. So moderator. When CDC was advocating for the war crime code at that time, we had security in the country called Liberia. Today, you do not have no security in our country. You know what I mean? So you're telling me that today we should look at those that fought uh, the early Johnson Selly herself will be included, the pre Johnson, the Haji Kumar, the Matek Kone, and uh, the rest of the guys today. Even the Yaka Koluba. That cry for war crime code today. The better than you it. That cry for the economic crime code today. Why they didn't do it during the early study administration? That's what we complete. That's what we're talking about here. Why they didn't do that? Why not? Why not? Mr. Mr. Jackson, country, somebody listening to you. Say, listen, somebody listening when, 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 when to you. Say, oh, 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 you. Let me finish my statement. Let me finish yeah. my statement. Let me finish my statement. When the concern of this president. 
ways to see how we can best face the economy that we find ourselves today that was created by the past administration after 16 billion dollars were put into this government, into that government, and they abused, they misused that money, and this person came in and inherited a broken economy. This concentration is to see how you can bring back the economy together. People are crying, oh, we want to walk around court in that kind of situation. Are you killing me? Thank you, Mr. Major Epstein. Now, uh, Mr. Bantu. Mr. You can have a walk around court. Let's see what a Prince Johnson will turn himself over. Mr. Banto, yes, all the right. Politics, yes. The politics yes. of the war crime call. Yes, the me, CDC, me. the CDC uh -huh. is 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 betting on the politics of war crime call for a second term. Now, people who follow you, when you advocated for the war crime call, given what you're saying right now, we think that you have changed your position. This is a 360 degree turn. No, what we don't change our position. No, CDC don't change your position when it comes to the war crime call. No, that's not true. Uh, uh, let me come in. What we say is that if you can bring back the 50,000 all male soldier that was in Liberia, trust me, the war crime call will start today, tonight. That's what we say. We are not against it. So just get that straight. We are not against it. Go. Mr. Banto. Yes, okay. Let me let me your know president, about your yeah, president me... is known in the country as the country giant. No one can fight a giant. Why is it that they walk crank code? There's too much politics about it. I think you guys yes. have yes. given uh, a 360 degree turn here. No, no, not at all. Are you getting me? Yes, we are getting you. Okay, I think any side of the aisle, whether you in opposition or you part of the ruling party like my very self, that we want to politicize the issue of this war crime code, it means that you are doing injustice to the Liberian people. I strongly believe that the war crime code should be established. It will serve as deterrent to future occurrence. But is it right now in the We Are Land administration? I think what President We Are Need to do, and he has already did it, is by going after the United Nations to ensure a safe, secure environment. And this is why people are still saying that any administration was the best time because the presence of all male in the country at the time. Just imagine, you can remember, you will bear me witness, you will agree with me, when they brought Taylor from Sierra Leone and they brought him back to Liberia before carrying him, and then, yeah, when they brought him from Nigeria, brought him back to Liberia before carrying him to Sierra Leone, you saw the way the, the U.S. <laughs> over the world of Morocco that day. I'm a very sorry, in Morocco that day. You see, so why is it true that for me, I, I, I need a war crime for today. But I strongly believe the security, the environment is not secure. So the president has to still go after the U.S. And we Liberians too have to take the knee to stay on our feet and say, look, Mr. President, we are in support of this war crime code. It will serve as deterrence. So in saying this, we have to be very factual. We have to be not political. Because the war that came in our country, it affected everyone. Every one of us were affected. And I strongly believe that the war crime code should be established the Liberian people and the government should go after the UN to hope to give us that, or if they feel that they can provide some security so that we can use the code in Sierra Leone, which will, which will cost us less money, let us do it. That will help to put security in place in the country. Because most of the people that will be arrested that will be taken to the court, they have constituents. And they could take for anything at any time, you know. But now we're standing. Now Mr. Banto. The president is under that obligation. So go after the USA law, my people want to work on for. But these are things that we want you to help us with. We still have to go after them. Mr. Banto, uh, one will say that the president is bluffing and playing games with the war crime code. We saw this president when he wanted $500 million for the coastal road. He went to Eton and he went to the legislature and it will pass in the middle of the night. When he wanted another $500 million, he was trying to raise $1 billion. He went to the very legislature on Igbo math, and it was passed overnight. We are, somebody might be saying that if the president seriously won the war crime court, as oh, he cool. and his party has advocated, See, why can this party. president, let me learn, why can this president send a bill to that very legislature so that it can be fast track as they did with Eton and Iboma 
to show that he really uh, uh, serious about the war crime code. You, you know what I will tell you? Let's look at it beyond Liberia. The issue of war crime code is beyond Liberia. What do I mean for that? It's beyond Liberia. Uh, even if we pass a bill, if the president pass a bill, still a bill and we pass, you think we have the money to facilitate the war crime code by ourselves? My answer is no. So this is the first president's second time to the UN General Assembly before addressing the United Nations General Assembly. And he, in his second letter to the UN, he requested for the work on food. So let's see what the next one will bring. But I'm very sure this president is going to be going to embark upon our work on food, taking into consideration in every sector, every part of that work on food that will be a help, you know, to the Liberian people. Meaning All right. All right, Mr. Banto, we'll leave it there. But it was your very president when he returned from the UN. I listened to him and I remember it very well. He said, since we took power, unquote, we have never one day, go to the clip, your president was speaking when he returned. After mm -hmm. he made that request that like you were talking about at the United Nations, when he yeah. returned, he said, since we took power, we mm -hmm. have now one day yeah. request, yeah. They, we have now one day requested a war crime court, yeah. unquote. Yeah. Yeah. So when you are saying that the president went to the UN two times and asked for the war crime court, I don't see what I don't see where the truth is. But we'll leave it right no, there on the wall. No, 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 let me tell you, you're not getting me. You're not getting me make the clarity right now. I'm saying when the president first went to the first time to, to, to the UN General Assembly, he never asked for a walkout for you. Okay. This second time is it is the first time to request the walkout for you. You get what I'm saying? Right. So it so it means that from now on, it will be something that he will be you know, speaking on because he know that Liberia is in Liberia, he needs a work on food. The first thing, whether he needs to talk about work on food, but for now, since he has started that journey, I think the United Nations itself will put into, into, take into consideration everything that is needed to ensure that you know, the work on food be implemented in the full year. Because for me, I support the work on food. Let me, let me, let me, let me, let me. Let me let me add up the Julia vote. The yeah, of it. let me throw this to you and then you can add up. Uh, Vani, okay. he talked about Liberia does not have money. Research is saying to us that even in Sierra Leone, even in Rwanda, those two countries did not fold the bill. Maybe they spent some money, but they did not uh, afford the entire bill. So to say that Liberia does not have money, so we can't talk about the war crime code. I don't know okay. how I'm that can hold water come in, Vanny. Okay. Thank, 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 thank you. Thank you, my brother. Again, let me say this. And maybe that's why a lot of people don't understand me when I speak. I don't play around the bush and I don't, I don't speak to entire people. I don't speak to, to in popularity. I'm an honest politician who say I see it. Let me be honest with you. The greater mistake person ever person we have ever make between now to 2023 is to even think about fighting for a war crime code. It will strongly let his agenda. He will not succeed when it comes to government and he will defeat him at the battle back. To say that we are playing politics because we want to vote for Nima County is laughable. We are concerned and say and saying and clear again for the record. Albani Saki did not partake in the war. I did not do anything to, to support the war. I was victim of the war. I lost many family members. But actions of Liberia since 2005 to 2017 have demonstrated and convinced me beyond reasonable doubt that reconciliation was the best way forward. We demonstrated that it was not going to our ear, to our head, when we stood in the line and danced and voted for people who committed mayhem in our country. My dear brother, we got too many things at stake to accomplish now. Our action is convincing the international community. Let us not come back and start playing more plays of ourselves. You can stay in Queens and support the vote. The best war crime code was to deny these people from taking state power in our country. That was the mm -hmm. best action to take against the war laws. Mm -hmm. And you were dancing in a t-shirt. You were celebrating for them. You gave them power to govern, or you come back and cry on my feet. The international committee are laughing at us because they seem to be that Liberians do not really know what they want. It seems to be we are down a country really with people that, that, that got no sense of direction. You but still you are with no gun. You can pass a bill to deny them the opportunity to run for public offices. Uh, yeah, we can do that. We get other ways that we can we get other ways that we can deny them for the public space. But I'm saying that I'm not against war crime code. I'll tell you today, if I'm satisfied with the security environment where I can arrest the general today and prosecute them, the country will be stable. I'm ready for that. With the current situation, it will be a mistake for President. We have to fight for war crime code. Doing that, you will be harming himself. These guys who are fighting today for war crime code are playing politics. 
They are the one playing real politics. The point here is, let me ask you not Bando to buy me a plane. I know you can buy the plane, so if you don't buy the plane, I can use it against it. We are not ready for that because we clearly shows that we want a reconciliation. We are reconciled our country. We can sit with the ex-general, we drink beer, we go to the movies with them, we get our daughters to them. We are having a living together as our brothers and sisters. Can you see here in the country? You got a country where as general move around the street freely. And people want to say that God killed my mind in the past and they say, I forgive you, I leave you to God. Liberians are God forgiving people. That we see we have done it with you today in 2005, we did it in 2011 at the Battle of Baptist, my brother. If we have a work record, they'll build the economy first, they'll create a security environment where people will be protectors in the villages, in their homes, so that when people are prosecuted, you will go to base this side and everybody will not play the country. Thank you, Mr. Saki. Thank you, Mr. Generals that they believe was there for them. Mr. Saki, thank you, Dad. But the only thing I can say here is that we as a country now as are giving an interpretation to the outside world. Sheryl Leone prosecuted a war loss. Rwanda did the same thing. Germany did it, except for Liberia. I don't think that is a good message, but we'll leave you it right up, You sent a message in 2005 when we voted for war loss. You sent a message we'll already. We'll leave it right there. Vanna, yeah, we'll leave it right there, and we'll go into our, our, our final segment here, which is the issue of accountability and transparency. I will start with you, Vanny. Is your government transparent and accountable in the eyes and face or to the true meaning of the two words, accountability and transparency. Let me say to you very well, I'm very, very pleased with the government will come to transparency and accountability. Where I will not stand to defend 24 hours is to fight against perception. We are living in a society where people see you and judge you based on perception. Where people will just raise allegations against you with no substance, no facts, but based only on assumption. There can be no clear evidence proving that the government has conducted herself in a way that undermines accountability and transparency. But men on the other side have created facts against this government and have been successful in propagating those negative information created to tarnish the image of the government. If you bring them to proof, by presenting evidence, they present assumption, they present gossip, and they present rumors. I'm not here to tell you that this government is doing that with holy ghosts and saints. But what I'm here to tell you that the government, the president, and the official government are conducting themselves in a way where you can see that the government actually believes in transparency and accountability. When the 16 billion dollar new broke up, the action taken by President We are, the actual person we are took at the time, clearly tells me and gave me the hope. I did not waste my time standing behind someone who are coming to follow the same path. He went out and asked for external help so that the evidence can be brought. But again, my brother, we are living in a country where people look for evidence based on obsession and not facts. That was up to today, even the clear fact that there were no system beyond that missing. People still running around with it. There's still evidence that was not 25 million that fuel in the economy. People are still saying, where are our 25 million? Where are our 25 million? Where are Clear information provided that that's why we were infusing the economy and this were left. We are living in a country where people actually do not dig for facts because of the perception. Why I do not like you, I create anything against you. To tell you that everything is honey and everything is perfect, no. But I'm here to see somebody bring on corruption and provide me clear and convincing evidence to prove to me that this is corruption and this was caught and will prove you. And don't just tell me about it, but show me it. Because to tell me that there's Funny. corruption is one thing. Point to the corruption and show me evidence that these things that were done by the government are corrupt practices. No discuss it and look at the Funny. system in the argument. So Funny. I appreciate you just point out the one. Vanin, yep. on the issue of the 25 million, we had the crime report. We have the uh, PIT report. We have the GSC report. When the report came for the GSC, we was the most recent report. The report was clear that there were institutions that were dealt with as claimed by the economic management team that don't exist on any planet. And also funds allotted or given to those institutions. So if those institutions don't exist at all, and then they were given money, that means something went wrong. And so for you to sit here and say you don't have any plan with the government in terms of transparency, I don't know what to believe. And let me say also, because the president 
wanted to see that we get to the bottom of this thing. After many Liberians, a line pointed out the money that went amazing from the 25 million that I'm talking about money that were given to the institution at the six and they wanted action for the president to take action. The president sent the report to LACC. And when the president sent a report to LACC at the time, the president made it clear to us that that report was going to stay there for at least about a month and was going to get the report and act on it. That report is yet to return. Something tell me something is not right. What do you say to that? These are things you, people should be standing up for and demanding for. These are things if you think something is not right. These are things you should be demanding for. So, I did the president say yes. You will, you, will, you get a time frame. Now, if the time frame is not met, it's your right. It's my right to demand. I said it clearly. You. We should run after the president when he made a promise to us. But you are you the one in the street demanding to get coverage on your sixteen billion dollar. And you have problem with it. And so I didn't have no problem. Not, I don't. I didn't have problem. What I have problem with that. I, I knew that it was not true to tell me to look at the total amount of money in the economy and tell me 16 billion dollars get missing. I'm a level in the economy. I was just concerned about the amount. I was just concerned about the kind of information that was surrounding it. I, I don't have. I, I don't. I will never be against Liberians standing up to ask for what they demand. What what they think is right for them. Look, the country belongs to all of us. Not because this is a CDC-led government. It means I should find every activity people will stand up for. You're right. If the president gave time frame to study investigation. It is a right of La Brembo to ask why we do not have clarity up to today. Why today we are saying that the president gave it two months, we want six months. Why the president is answerable to us? That's what we would like to him. We are we have the right as citizens to stand and question the president. We see that the president set our time frame or send investigation and the investigation time frame expired and said nothing. We can demand these are things, but we cannot also conclude because my problem is that I hate the assumption. One background study would never allow me to find people guilty based on assumption. That's why I find it difficult most of the time. That's why you saw when Ellie Johnson conspired and brought all this, the, 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 the global winning case against Tyler, the distraught Tyler. I was a fair standing in the public and challenging the government saying Tyler is innocent because I knew that was whole thing about Korean conspiracy. Some of the folks on the left said they started calling corruption. King Kong. Thank God today I walk him out of the court with a fine color because the court found no evidence. What I'm trying to push is, we want, I want to build a car, I want to build a country where people will look for facts. Even if the facts are not available, do not create them. Do not assume and create them. Wait until they can display themselves. Then you can All come right. and say they 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 So my dad, brother, you're right. If the person gave a time frame, you are, you get it right. You get it wrong. This is the CDC government. You see how tonight here, try to clear up the issue. We are not just here because we think that we should blow the trumpet where everything is okay. We are also making sure we're spending the job when things goes wrong because you know what? The institution will want, we want the institution to get birth after we are leaving to get birth to another government. We cannot Thank do you. it when we try to be sick offense and lying to the president when it's bad, we say it's good. We can communicate with the president. Things we say inside will not say the public. Maybe people don't understand it sometimes. They say, oh, we are sick of fans, we are job seekers, but we cannot say everything in the public. But what's supposed to be said in the public, we say it. Why in the public, we say it to help our government succeed. Thank you. Thank you so much. Chairman uh, Jackson, let me come to you. You can remove yourself off new. All right. Thank you, Chairman right. Jackson. In oh. the PAPD, I read the entire thing. Brilliant document in terms of theory and in terms of uh, narrative. But what the Liberian people are looking for is not telling them stories about what you would do. The president was clear in that document, the statement on the first page, he talked about hope and prosperity. He talked about generational change. He talked about equitable yes. distribution. He talk about right based, right based approach. The economy is in shambles. You know it. Why is CDC government performing this bad after all of these things the president have said? Is he not using the right based approach? He said that the, the economy is not being managed in a way that the resources will be distributed uh, equitably. You know, when, when, when I see uh, the oppositions coming out to say that this government is performing badly, it's laughable to me all the time I hear that. But again, uh, they, they got a right to say that. And uh, right now, our information um, 
uh, what do you call it, uh, a team to start together to battle these things. But quickly, before I answer your question on our PAPD, uh, because you asked, I just want to pick it back to the why the president did not present to the uh, legislature for the war crime court. The, 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 the answer to that why is because the war crime court is not the priority of this president agenda, period. Okay. Wow. So that's, the, yeah, let me clarify that. That's the, that's the why right there. And why he presented the air term, or, or what they call it, or, 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 or document to the legislature for approval. The, the, the reason for that is because the president agenda here is what? For what? Road development and infrastructure. So let's get to your, uh, the question about the economy. Look, we got to be honest here sometimes, like my brother Vanny said, um, this government is our government. Uh, we see some things, uh, um, we will come out and see, and see them, you know, we're not going to sit there and don't talk about it. And one, one of those things, uh, the president coming out to say, oh, he, he, this is not a CDC-led government. I mean, for some of us, we, we disagree with him. This is a CDC-led government. Now, look at where the president took this country from. The economy. Okay, the president came in, he made what? $150 million in our coffer. Okay? When Ellen Joseph Sully was in power, the international community pumped in over $16 billion. And I will tell you this today for fact. And I hope this recording will be kept. If this president will receive only Two billion dollars. I will tell you now that he will do far better than the sixty billion dollars that we receive from the early Jersey Salif government because this president is honest and he has the mind and he wants to see Liberia develop. Okay, so I'll repeat myself: the sixty billion dollars that were given to early Jersey Salif that she squandered with her son Robert Salif that is running around today. But I know for far we're going to get some of this money back since the, uh, the economic team were put together to retreat back some of this money. I'm 100% sure they are in the U.S. here right now, working with lawyers over here. Some of this money, we're going to get them back. You know what I mean? So if we can only get $2 billion of that money right now in this government, the economy that we're all crying for today will be better. Now, you have over 2,000 UMP scheme folks in Liberia that were receiving over $10 million a month. Yes, all that $10 million was not infused into the economy. But let's say they had 2,000 nurses that they employ. They were paying U.S. dollars. I'm talking about only nurses. I'm not talking about accountants and all staff that are working with them. So if you put the whole number together, you're talking about almost 5,000 people, like people that were working with for the U.N., for OMIL, and all these people were paying U.S. dollars. Those Latinos were doing what? They were using their money in the market that was circulating. So there, this government does not have that willpower. And people will sit there and fight this government, that this government is fighting, this president is struggling, traveling every day and night. I can't remember what was the last time the president even sat in his own country, he's on his way again back to Kuwait and other countries to beg them to come to bring investors into this country. And we want to blame this president and not give this president the opportunity, the chance to lead, to, to see how best he and his economic team can work together to see how they can change the, uh, the present economic situation. We talk about prosperity, we talk about hope in our PDP. Mr. 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 Uh, 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 moderator, let me be honest here. When was the last time you ever saw the opposition or you even saw the, 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 the media today coming up today to show their homes in Sandstown, in Grand Coup, that the president is today taking those votes from other map to to what? To uh, 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 money home. Mr. Jackson, that is not the opposition to, to praise no, no, the no, president. No, 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 I come in, 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 I come in. Yeah, they're not, I, I'm, what I'm saying, yeah, that's not a rule, you're right. That's not a rule. But what I'm saying is that the hope that the president promised the Liberian people, that's it right there. You know what I mean? Taking these people that been for the, for, for the for the entire life, living in uh, those modern house homes and stuff like that today. We have over 500 homes built in. Look at Purple Bridge. We're talking about the hope. Look at Purple Bridge. What happened? Mr. Jackson, your problem I as a government now is the economy. All these uh, little projects here and there, I mean, how is it helping the economy? 
Okay, good. How exciting the economy is that, like the home in, in Purple Beach right now, they're going to be building over what? Hundreds of stores over there. We're going to see very soon. And I gave you probably maybe in the next three to six months, they're going to finish up with all the homes over there. No beaches there. Going to be open for tourists. And then what happened? All those stores that the president is going to put over there, this is people going to what? Engage them. And those, uh, what they call the tourists are going to come. They're going to go there to this and that area. And they're going to buy. They're going to spend money. And then what happened? Our tourist or sector start to bloom up. And the economy start to go. It takes time. You know, they said to destroy something, it takes your second. To fix it, it takes your time. This president, look, look, I'll, I'll say this to you. If we were to remove President Wian right now, and let's say we bring in or uh, Anthony CA in now as the president of the Republic of Liberia, trust me, I don't think you have been or you have done that much that this president has done so far. I'm you sorry, so? I don't, I don't, I don't have that ambition. Thank you for, for throwing me there. I'm just saying something. I'm just, I know. I get you see, I get you see your name. It could be, I know, it could Joe. be anybody for that matter in the opposition. You know what yeah. I mean? Like, I guess that move, that's, that's, that is so bad. Hey, it was, that look at it is so that, hey, it is that president we are. It's Anthony C. that is there now. What this president has done in the shortest time, my brother, trust me, I will sit there for fun that Anthony C. would not have accomplished what this president has done. So, all this is there, it's going to take time. Yeah, the economy is a big challenge to this president. It's a big challenge. Thank, thank you, Mr. Jackson. Sitting, Let's go to Mr. Banto. Oh, the president is not sitting 40 a hand a day and say, yeah, I like the way things go on. Oh, yeah, it's good. No, he worries about it every single day. And that's the reason why. But the president just said, said that he's not ahead. disappointed. You say he's not worrying about it. Maybe you are. You, you say he's he's not. Like, the president just said that he's not disappointed that Liberia did not qualify for the MCC. If I were in his position, I would be disappointed that my country did not qualify. But I will leave it there and go to Judas Banto. Mr. Banto, let's look at the issue of judgment. Before you go to before you go to Mr. Banto or mm -hmm. Sonny, let, let me ask okay. Mr. Jackson. M Mr. Jackson, if the uh, if the president is doing so well, the economy is doing so well, the plans no, are no. good. He's still no, 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 and then what you just said, they say, oh, Mr. Daxi said the economy is doing well. No, I said this president has a big challenge on him right now. He's worried about this economy. And that's why he's doing everything in his week with he and his financial team. Right. They put together. They are working on it to make it better. No, right. the economy is not good. That's not what I said. Oh, Thank the, you. Are you saying the economy is bad? Yeah, I would say that, yes, of course, because um, the economy is bad. It's not good. Okay. Of course, right, I would good. say that. It is bad. But and the president is doing so well in other areas. So why is this? Why is this fight of uh, of the sedition not being in, in government? Or why is it that has a? Why is it so important? If I mean things are going well, except for the economy. If if you are not if you are not do, if somebody else is doing it and the country is moving forward, isn't that being selfless? Why do you still want to stick with sedition being in government before you certify? Okay, good. I, I, will, I will keep it the answer for my closing statement. Mm -hmm. Now, let me say this to you. Like Mr. Osaki said uh, from the very beginning. But look, my brother, we are talking about the institution over here. After President we are six or 12 years in power, I'm looking at the, the institution picture. to continue. The big I'm coming, is the I'm coming to, Hold on, hold on. You're answering the question. Yeah, then you gotta give me a chance. Let me answer. I don't want you bombarding me and you know, confuse my thought. Okay? No, don't get, don't yeah. get confused. Nah. Just relax. Yeah, yeah. I'm relaxed. I, I'm trying to. I was trying to keep this uh, answer uh, at my closing statement. Now, we are talking about the institution over here. After President, we are. Then what? Now, when we went for the election, it was 35 percent to 38 percent of citizens. I'm talking about the, the, uh, the coalition, okay? That was the percentage before we got the 62%. So if you subtract the 35%, I mean, uh, the 38% rather, right from the 62%, we're talking about the 24%. Now, the 24% that came in and helped us to win this election, okay? What we're saying here to the president is that, Mr. President, this government, 
is a CDC-led government. After you have led this government for six or 12 years and you leave power, we want to see the continuation of this political party. Because what happened in Africa, particularly in Liberia, when it comes to the party, our political party is that we build our institution around one person. Right after that person leaves, then the institution is dead. Is that the same case with CDC? You seen the history with, eh? Is that the case with the CDC? Sorry? Is that the case no, with the CDC? No, it hasn't happened yet, and that's what we're trying to prevent now. That's what we want to prevent. But hey, bring in the, 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 your, your generals, the people who fought with you, the people who stood with you, the coalition. Bring them in on board, Mr. President, so that they will be able to stand with you and see how best we can maintain this institution forward. Because look at the ANC, for example, in South Africa. Since Nelson Mandela came in, he left from there. There's no opposition. They have tried all the way to get the ANC out. They cannot. Why? Because what? They believe in the institution and the work around the institution. So this is where some of us coming from. So look, we want the CDC to be the next ANC in Africa. But how can we do that? How can we do that? And we try to push away our own people because I tell you now, when election come today, if they say there's election in the country today, they need some of the need that are, or we call it earlier today. Those people will not be on the forefront to campaign for president. We are. We're so happy in most of our country. We're so happy in both country. President and CDC have lost four big country. Most of our country, what we call it, Brown County, Lima County, and Lofa County. Those countries are no longer in our in our corner, except that the three. Don't forget about Lofa. Those three right now, they're not in our they're not in our corner. How can we get those three back in our corner, Mr. President? That's why we are here tonight. Mr. President, you need to go back to Mosurado County, your, 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 your 17 district coordinators, those are those frontline soldiers, bring them to the table. Do you understand me? Bring them to the table. Go to Bond County. Go to Bond County. You got a district uh, leaders over there, coordinators over there. Bring them to the uh, to the table. Because Mr. right Jackson. now, that's my worry right now. That's my Mr. worry Jackson. right now. How are we going to win election in Liberia? Because look, hold on. The oppositions and those that are in power right now with the president, trust me, they are they will not remember all the good things that this president is doing when it comes to election. They will still vote against him. And we saw him in Mosurado County when people are dying along there who have to put the economy of this country and work with Robert Saleh, stole thousands of dollars over there, try with Ellie Johnson Saleh, and I see nobody protesting, uh, 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 what do you call it, for Donald Trump, traveling with, uh, with Ellie Johnson Saleh, sitting right behind at the UN there, enjoying the Fast Star Hotel around the world. Nobody uh, 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 protesting. Mr. Against, Jackson, uh, that is why you have time. power now to corral the run and so try to do it. Let's go Thank to you. Julius Banto. Let's go to Julius Banto. Thank you. Let's go to Julius Banto. Mr. Banto, on the issue of judgment, Vanny will tell you what political optics means. You came to power, and the first thing we heard was the president acquiring mansions. The issue of the Ninth Street, that was not a good sign. Less than three months into power, he broke it down. We're listening to the Deputy Press Secretary, uh, Smith Tobey. Smith Toby told us that the property was given to the, the son of the president and it was the son of the president who uh, had been constructing that, that, that particular property. That's one. Another judgment question, private jet, even Ellen Johnson Saleh, who you are saying that received so much goodwill, $16 billion in foreign direct investment, they now fly a private jet. But your president is flying a private jet. Smith to be the must be of the president said that the whole private jet thing that people who are friends with the president are giving him the opportunity to fly this private jet. And when you look at our laws, a any official, any elected official should not be able to take a gift worth more than two hundred dollars. So when Smith to be said that, I held my head. I said, Wow! If I were the president, I'll fire this guy. But again, the man has a job. So on the issue of judgment, the two essences that I name, do you see your president being good when it comes to judgment? You are on mute. I'm on mute? Yeah, you're good now, you're good now. Okay, you, you got me clear? Yes. 
Okay, uh, let me speak to the issue of uh, the money that you make reference to, the money that was uh, misused by, the money that was meant for Muppet, right? Uh, yeah, uh, we do that, issue. we'll be going way by. We have, we have 15 minutes left, so we deal with that. Let, just answer that question. Oh, oh, oh my God. Okay, I want to start from that. We're talking about transparency here. So, okay, then to, be brief, please. I want to be on record for that. You guys have said this before. When, okay. when, when, when this report came up, I posted in the chat room immediately that the finance minister should be fired. Okay. And the reason is the finance minister is the head of the economic management team. You cannot put money into or infuse money into a system that you cannot account for. And all, because of that, they are still staying my ground that the final minister to be fair. We shouldn't be selective in dispensing justice. Who? The first problem I have when it comes to transparency on our government, look, we have to be factual here. This is about country. I see country above political affiliation. We have to be factual. It is not possible that a government will come you shall see a government that, that ran the country for good 12 years, where no car broke down in less than a year, and you refuse to prioritize audit. The very first thing, you start to question, people will start to question your own transparency. And when I even said this, I said, look, we need to audit this administration so that people will know what we stand for. And to be fair with you, because of those losses that we overlooked, it is because of those lapses, those mistakes today, the partners are holding tight to giving us money. And in order for us to move forward, all those corrective measures have to be taken. With well, the issue of the house, the president's house that was that was that was that, that you referred to on, on 9th Street. All right. I think it was not timely. I strongly believe that, yes, it is true that this president had his own money before even vying for the presidency. But it was not timely at that time, just right after inauguration, to start breaking house down and start building house and start doing this. I think it should be about the people. You win and you won an election on the basis of your support, your grassroots support. Now you have to get by the good by prioritizing the interests of the people. And the question would be: if it is true he had his own money, why he didn't do it before? Why he, he, didn't, he didn't do it then? Why now? So I think people around the president are, are advising him and not doing him justice. You know, the president is a human, like my very self, like you. He's subject to making mistake. You know, and to be frank, it pains me because Liberia be having a lot of good leaders, but the people around the leader are of no help because they just say, yes, sir, yes, sir, yeah, it's good so that they can protect their government, their, 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 their job. But they are not looking at the success of the leader that is, that, they, that, they, that, they, that they protected. You can also disagree with your leader politely when you know very well that what he or she is doing is not right. And I the private jobs? I strongly believe that the building of the horses was not timely. With the issue of the private jet, or I want to speak with proof. You know, I don't want to insinuate. I don't want to suppose. I want to have facts. I've been hearing it that the president will fly with private jet. If what you say here, if it is truth, I didn't listen to Smith told me, but it is true, it is wrong. Because it is in the law. You know what I'm saying? It is yeah. in the law. And to be frank, I always say this. We voted, we supported this president, not on the basis of he's a billionaire, not on the basis of He's the best educated person. It's just simply on the basis that like we saw him like one of us, one of ourselves. So why the president cannot even fly commercial jet? Yeah? You, 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 you bear a people-centered person before going to the presidency. Why you can't stay be you? What flying private jet will even do? If somebody will give you private jet to fly, let me give you the money you have your people. The people saw you as they went forward to their life. Look, I, I, I say those things with passion because I was in the in election, the 2005, the 2011 election. And I know what the, what the CDC stands for. I know what partisan 
the common people, the Yana boys, the Shushan boys, people who cannot afford anything, they bought their own Tishai, they bought their own water, they sacrificed for party wife. You know, so to be firm with you, we need to be factual. When the president is doing things wrong, we need to say sometimes those things will come. But think about your country. If you fly with, with passing your plane, it only, it only add to your value that this president is trying to use resources wisely so that his people will benefit. You know, so my brother all bows down to those around the president. I don't think they are helping him. And it Thank is you. wrong if it is true that he's flying private jet. It is wrong. Thank you. Uh, Vanny, re remove yourself on mute. I'm coming to you. Okay. On the issue of judgment, and I know you told me you were giving political answers. I don't need political answer on this one because they has to do with judgment. And when we're talking about judgment, you have to be a human being to make that judgment. Your president, Judas, was not sure what I, uh, what I told him uh, is correct when Smith Tobe was interviewed. But the president himself, when the issue of the private jet came up, he said, oh, I mean, my friend gave me the private jet just to boost my morale. That's the words of the president. You follow this president religiously, and you know that he said that. For the president to have said that, knowing that by law and official of government, you cannot take a gift worth more than $200. That in itself, in somebody's opinion, maybe the president should have been impeached because he took gift. What do you say to that on judgment? Thank you very much. Am I, am I, am I on? Yeah, you are. All right, thank you so much. Again, as I stated there many occasions, maybe that's why you will not see me. You will see me in politics, but you will not see me in leadership because maybe of my honesty. Because I believe for leaders to be successful, they will have selfless followers. And they will have followers who are willing to tell them what they need to hear and not what they love or want to hear. And in our political and governing system, it's hard for such people to be around leadership because people will either marginalize them, label them as spy or all kind of negative names. But I believe that we can be very honest to our leaders and still keep a great relationship because a good leader is a leader who wants to listen to honest followers. Let me say to use very well that. On many occasions, I expressed my disappointment in the president's farm private jet. Let me be on record for that. And I said I communicated it privately. And I even demonstrated it through action. I mean, to a practical license. I said, I say to the president and other folks, if I drive a 2019 BMW today and drive to your house, my dear brother, and tell you that it's not easy in my home, my wife and kids, we have not eaten for three days, please help me with 10 or 20 to buy some food for my family to eat. And you come out in your driveway and see me driving 2019 BMW. What would you think about? Visual perception. What would you think about? I can guess you will not give me that money. No. Let's move, let move the constitutional aspect for the whole thing about can't receive more than $200. Let's look at it from an other background, from a leadership standpoint. You have a president who took over on January 22nd and announced to the world that he inherited a broken economy and a broke government. In order to attract and in order to attract assistance from around the world, the government and the official in government demonstrate to action that their lifestyle is in conformity with the message of the president. Mm -hmm. So that you are not saying one thing and your official and your lifestyle live contrary to your message. You cannot inherit a broke government, a broken economy, a broke government, and fire a private giant. No matter if a friend gave you a free or charge. No, let me tell you, my dear brother, I've been in leadership for many years. And I tell you, sometimes you have to practical our leadership that people can see the honesty in your actions. So that sometimes you don't even talk, you just act. See. When people, let me be very honest with you, there are a lot of errors down the way, and I hope we can correct them. And we can only correct them when people are, oh, are given the opportunity to be around the president. So that we are not worrying about protecting jobs, but we are worrying about protecting the image of the government because we want the government to see to survive and the institution that gave birth to the government can have the opportunity to give birth to the next government. This can only happen when the president is surrounded by several loyalists. And now people are scared to talk because they worry about the, their job. I said, oh, no, even if a friend offer you a no, let me tell you, brother. Certain time in life, you find yourself in certain situations. If I come to your house and offer you my expensive shoes and clothes to wear and go to a party, don't take them. Because those clothes and shoes will serve as a hindrance and embarrassment.
for out of for, 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 for receiving assistance because when people see you, they already assume you. Okay, you're doing good, you're doing great. So you must always appear so that people can see that they got any help. The contract can be broke and you prime private jet. Even the private job given to you by a friend, tell your friend, I don't need it. Because the private jet will serve as a zero branding on you. You will have to defend it when other personnel fly to that brought the kind of commercial jet and you fly to them, you fly private jet. My brother, they will raise your perception. Visual perception is very important. You know, even though you cannot beat away main imagination and perception against you, but at least like you try sometimes to minimize it by your lifestyle. That's why when the party scene or the, or the coalition decided recently to deny big time from having party at the city's headquarters, I stood with them. And I said to the president, you have to start calling your cabinet minister and government official to meet it. Telling them that you, including them, lifestyle should live, it should be in conformity with your message. That you're saying what you're saying and the people are actually seeing it. Why are so many people angry in the country too much? Because you know what? People are seeing the official lifestyle in government. It's completely contradicting, it's contradicting to the president's message. When the president says that times are high, love be patient, and I see the minister as maybe from Boyan life, it upset the poor man. Like Brazil is a country of interrelated citizens. We all just living close to each other. Bernie Sagi was just living around the field with nothing. The movement president, we have made deputy minister, the guy like that thing forward like America. Then you turn around in the community and tell the people, just be patient, think hard, but two people, okay. But they look at Vanessa Sagi, the guy has grown all of his stomach. The guy cast in the yard, he said the guy fly out of the country, like somebody traveling from Bangladesh to Kazakhstan, and he turned by and tell the people, not be patient. I understand times are hard. The economy is filled with challenges. The government president is going through some tough times. But again, for the message to resonate with the people, people in government must demonstrate to the last time that times are real hard. I'm not asking you to be dirty. I'm not asking you to dress. But stop living from where last time in the midst of poverty. It upset the poor people. It make it difficult for the president message to resonate. And I will say to the president today publicly, as a strong supporter, and let me say for the record, over the past two days, I received many calls from other political parties. Do not waste your time calling me. I got no intention to leave the coalition of democratic change. I do not want to be a political spin for that when I first my support in 2011 to the CDC. I did not join a political party. I formed my support only because the party leadership was going to win start talking. And as a politician, I knew what was going to happen if we had won that election. Six months after the governing the government process, the government had to collapse and we're going to be internal fight. Because we are going to allow for we are being subject to winter talking. And in the, in the constitution, the president has the power, not the vice president. As a politician, I knew it was a fiasco. It would, it would lead to zero calamity. That was our first man so I left the CDC. I just left. Thomas until I found I came and became a funny member of the FPB. I'm one of the funny members of the party, of one of the parties in the coalition. So I'm not just one of the parties around that. I invested my resources there, talents and other guys. I went, I went down, I invested my resources. But I'm saying to the president, I got no intention to lead the coalition. So stop calling me and thinking like you're bad or no. I can spend my child, but it's not me. I'm going to abandon the child. I spend the child to call the child. That's what action we should take in government to show that things are real hard so that our people can understand that times are hard because they're seeing our lifestyle. Those are breaking and living from buoyant life in the midst of poverty. And they see that asking our people. I will hope that the president do not fly a power jet. It causes a serious embarrassment. It put men and me in a tight position to defend. Because in my conscience, I know it's difficult. But politically, I have to correct I have to press it. I have to speed it. I have to do any kind of thing to address it. But in my conscience, my God gave me conscience, something is telling me that I'm deceiving the president. And I don't want to be one of the people who will deceive somebody. It's bad for my spirit. It's bad for my religion. You cannot deceive your leader. I'm asking the president, do not fly a power jet. Call government official and start to warn and set up, stand up. People want to live in line with the message. If the government is broken, the economy is bad, let it be reflected in the lives of those that lead the government and should not be contrary to the president's message. When we do that, our people will understand and together, we will all be patient for the better days to come. We don't want to be patient when other people are way up there we are patient down in Lado. We are being honest and what we're standing with the party we're going to say today. To conclude the big government, this will end my call statement. I'm asking the president again, as a politician, you cannot win election just because you are elected today and you will be elected tomorrow. You depend on your base. The recent statement made by President Weah concerning the party and the government has the propensity to damage the base. And if President Weah will not listen to me as one of the confidants, come in the public. I don't want it done privately because the statement will make public and create some public damages in the, in the party. Let the president come back in the public, apologize to every citizen for making such a statement that has the propensity to damage the institution, retract his statement, and let us go back for a national retreat and sit together as part of the scene to fix some of the problems inside. And let sedition take over that government. Let us win together as a team and let us lose together as a team. Thank you so much, my dear brother.
Thank you, Vani. Thank you. Uh, final question on judgment, and then we'll wrap it up. As things stand right now, <clears throat> economically, many people are saying that agriculture might be your only hope to revive the economy, to make the economy to be productive, to back your currency. As we speak, we do not have an agricultural minister. I think it's been a little over four months now. We don't have an agricultural minister when it comes to judgment. Is this president making the right judgment to not have an agricultural minister proper, to continue to allot little or no money to the agricultural ministry when your government is suffering? That would be the final question on judgment. Uh, Mr. Jackson, you go first. And uh, let me briefly you do your yeah. statement yeah. that we here. Yeah. Can you hear me? Yes, we can hear you. OK, quickly, um, before I dive into that question, if you just give me uh, 30 seconds, uh, let me send this warning out there to, to our president in line with what Mr. Vani Saki just said. Uh, Mr. President, if you are listening to this um, interview tonight, please, uh, we are here um, just to guide you. We are not here to criticize you. I mean, we have to make you be to where you are. Uh, we can be the same people that can go out there to break it down. Like Mr. Uh, Saki said, immediately I resigned as the chairman for CDC USA. I received um, a lot of calls from the oppositions. Uh, just recently, I'm not going to call which one is standing better from which party. I will offer a huge sum of money to travel then around the country. I refuse. This is my party. I'm going to say my party. Mr. President, please do us a favor. Make the next campaign to be easier for us. If you can return that pirate jet. Uh, I flew with uh, the Saluna former president, Mr. Puruma, on SM Brussels from Freetown to Brussels. He and I sat in first class. I saw it. I couldn't believe it. I said, yes. Mr. President, please return that private jet and fly commercial plane because it will help, it will help us and will make our job easier for the next election, 2020 and 2023, to run our campaign. Because those are things that the opposition are going to use against us. I hope you're listening to us. Uh, this is just an honest appeal to you. We've been very um, respectful to you on the show, and we're just asking that uh, that plane be returned, please. So, um, Mr. Saki, um, um, I beg you, repeat that question again for me, please. Yeah, I, I uh, Josh, man, you don't one. have an agriculture minister. Okay. Agriculture is your only hope. Uh, Thank you. And, and please be brief. We have uh, less than yeah. 10 minutes. To Agriculture in every country is a key to a nation's development. Uh, not having an agriculture minister for the past four months, I will not sit here and tell you the why. Maybe the president knows the reason why he has not appointed any minister. But I want to say to our president, His Excellency, Dr. Dr. Successful George Manawia, if you can see reason, and I'm going to call somebody name out here today, Mr. President. We talk about reconciliation. Mr. President, you talk about reconciliation. And I hope you listen to this appeal that I'm making to you tonight and put me to a test. And if it doesn't happen in the next six months, after you have appointed that person as the agriculture minister, Mr. President, call me and tell me, Mr. Jackson, why did you lie to me? Mr. President, please put your differences aside. If there's any, if there is any difference that you have with Mr. Uh, uh, Alba Tuba, we need a minister that is practical to hold that position. Someone that is practical. Mr. Tuba is personally involved into agriculture sector in the USA here. You know what I mean? He is practical. Let us not just take somebody who have a degree from whatever university and say, oh, I have a degree in agriculture and put them there and just sit behind the desk. Mr. President, this man has all the qualification, and he is a practical person. I'm appealing to you, please, I take God, you are a man of God. And I'm going to pray on this, Mr. President. Please consider Mr. Ivan Topa as the next minister for agriculture, because agriculture, I just came from Indonesia, my brother, one of the poorest countries in the world. But I will say this to you, in that country, 
since I was there for the past two weeks. We ate every day and that was three times a day. Because every citizen in our country, they have some agriculture activity going on. Rice farm, the palm oil, the pepper, the beta ball, you can name it. Mr. President, let me close on this. My appeal to you tonight, please appoint Mr. Alba Toba as your next agriculture minister. And like I said, I gave him six months because of his connection over here and his involvement into agriculture activity. Liberia agriculture sector will change in the next six months. If it doesn't happen, Mr. Chair, uh, Mr. President, call me and tell me, Mr. Uh, Mr. Jackson, why deceive me? And I know I'm not going to deceive you. And I know and I believe in our man, Abatuba. I know he is willing to do the best for our country when it comes to the agriculture sector. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Jackson. And I think that will do it for your closing statement. Uh, Vani, uh, as there are many, can you close? Okay, thank you so much, thank you so much, so much my brother. Again, the quick question you should be, we should be asking ourselves when we talk about the agricultural sector, some of the questions we should be asking ourselves are, what kind of agricultural sector we vision for our country? The agricultural sector where a group of men will take qualities and go in the food to grow a piece of land to print rice and cassava, or a sector where modern agricultural equipment will be brought to the country? Which one? The agricultural sector where... Because let me, let me be very honest with you. I'm not a agriculturalist, but let me be honest with you. <clears throat> you need to change this, right? You need to change the system. When you talk about agriculture, food is important in every country. That's why even some of the great things the president is doing, people complain at times of high, you know what? Because food, you're not living in America. What made America great today is not just the infrastructure, but food. Everywhere you go in the country, food is available. When people are filled, they can have the time to ease down and think right. When people are angry, no matter how you try to make them happy, they're they angry. Let me tell you, my brother, we need more than our culture. We need to, we need to, we need to jumpstart and start everything over. The, the, our, our culture sector is dead. And to revamp it and make it, to make it productive, you need to modernize it. You need to jump from there, jump from one bush to another every year. I live in Iowa, one of the agricultural states in America. And since I came here for the past 12 years, there's a piece of land, there's a piece of corn farm, there's a land where they plant corn. I'm, to, or I'm on with the job. Since I've been in the country, every year they use the use are since back to play corn. They're not migrating from one place to another. You got the land. You just need the money and you need the equipment. You need to train the manpower to invest in the soil. And you use the same soil over and over to produce more food. You got country of 4.20 million people, small population of this cell. But you think you're going to use it by just giving qualities to men to go bread? My brother, it's not going to work. And just appointing our country, we got to start thinking. We have to now think about bringing equipment. We got the land already available. All we need to do is to invest in it. The budget, when we look at our budget, let more money be put in the budget for agriculture. Now, you're not just talking about growing more food by mouth. You grow more food because you invest in the soil. When you invest more in the soil, you get return. So, my brother, we got more to do. Again, to conclude, the challenges are there. Times are hard. But if we understand discipline ourselves financially, that was it. we have to financially discipline ourselves as our government. We have to be the one today to make the sacrifices to that was saying the press to the president in one of my communications. That in order to build a country vision for ourselves, for, I mean for our children, today's generation we have to make the sacrifice for tomorrow's generation. If we want for our children to live a better life, we should be willing to make the sacrifices. We cannot run a country where everybody for I, me, myself. We got to make the sacrifices today. We either take small paycheck who use most of our resources to invest in our country, create a friendly economic environment where jobs can be created in the private sector. We got to make the sacrifices today. We can't wish for big paycheck and the same time wish for development. We have to make the sacrifice. We got to discipline ourselves. We got to go through the sacrifice. We'll do it, my brother. I'm going to tell you that 10, 15, 20 years down the road, we pass our country over to the next generation and we will be proud that we pay the sacrifices. Or else, we will be repeating the same thing and thing we turn on the same road and spread the around a different location. And I hope the president will continue listening. We are here to help the president. We are not sick of friends. We are not job seekers. Even if we are having some of the opportunities to be high in government, I think it will be more difficult to stay in the government if the president will not be able to stay to, 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 to take the truth because I will not want to be in government and be a sick of friend where I can tell the president the truth. Because my goal is to see the president succeed. To conclude, the success of President George Weah is bigger than a government job for me. The success of President George Weah is more important because I stood with the president of the past two years because 
I believe that he comes from my generation. If you fail the country, my generation will not have another chance in the future. I'm concerned. I think the leadership personal because I know he's part of my generation. My image is tied to the government, and my goal is that the government succeeds so that in the future we can have a political acumen. We give birth to an institution that transform lives and improve our country. That's why some all pray for and I get the next government job. Thank you so much for the time. I'm happy to be on your show and I pray that we always have the opportunity to come back. Again, we stay committed to the past. We believe in institutions, more institutionally, but we will continue to correct the wrong as we fight for progress. Thank, Thank you. you. Judas Banto, a man who is hungry is also angry, somebody will say. It uh -huh. is government. The Liberian people are hungry. That is not an argument. Uh -huh. Please conclude. Yes, all right, brother. Thank you for the show. Thank you very much. Uh, to conclude, what I want to say is that uh, uh, the president need to, to come back to the institution. And, and this is why some of us continue to talk because, you know, we have something in us we call instant. When you're going wrong, they will tell you, look, why are you doing you going wrong? If you're doing the right thing, your instant will tell you that what you're doing is right and stand for it. And for me, I live with my instinct. You know, from the one, I knew the ability of Abatuba, and I know that he had the education, he had the expertise to get things you know, moving on. And that position you just spoke on, the agriculture minister, why should it be sitting and waiting at this time when your country is going through this kind of strife, this kind of difficult time? Those are areas that you will need to hold on to that you will need to get working so that, you know, mass food production, you put, you put people hungry in Liberia. Some of us now, we, we're selling bread and all to Liberia. And you have somebody here for your party. Who can get that job done? Why not tap into that party expert? I strongly believe that, President, we are need to do the best thing for the country. He should look at country over, over, over holding something against somebody. I really don't know if he has, he has anything against either. But I think I would consider Ava as a lesser evil as compared to people that he has in his government today who battled us for 12 years who never wanted to see his president. So I strongly believe that uh, to add to what uh, uh, former Chairman Jackson said, Ava should be you know, appointed as far as possible to get that uh, ministry you know, moving forward. To conclude, uh, I support this President Weir. I didn't support him because he's a money man. I didn't support him because he's a best soccer player. I support him because I see him as someone who is from my generation. And when he succeeds, it means I succeed. So it's based upon this background, we supported him, and it is based upon this background, we are still talking to ensure that the writing is done so that some of us will have the opportunity tomorrow to serve. So having said this, brother, I just want to extend my thanks and appreciation to you for allowing us on the show you know, we, we love our party. We believe in the institution. What we want to see is Liberia moving forward and the institution should not be left on the wayside. The president should come back to the, to the party so that we can reorganize our government and move our country forward. Thank you very much. Thank you again. That was the voice of Mr. Judas Banto, current chairman of CDC USA, Ross Island chapter. We have had Mr. Vani Saki, who is the Vice Chairman for Administration, the Coalition for Democratic Change. And we also been having with us Mr. Joe Jackson, Chairman Emeritus of CDC USA. Gentlemen, were able to go into the discussion by pointing out uh, some contradictions. And, and we also were able to point out those things that they want to see change uh, by their government so that the people of Liberia and Berlin fit. It has been almost two hours we've been here going into this conversation. My name is Anthony C. This is how we'll come to the close of this broadcast. I'm the co-host here and I have with me my host, uh, or our host, Mr. Dennis Ja. Mr. Ja? So that's how we'll go home, gentlemen. Uh, we are sorry that you are not in the photo, but maybe <laughs> some we'll photo will take us home. Gentlemen, thank, thank you. you for having you. Gentlemen, I want to and thank you. Uh, anytime we'll reach out to you when we need you again. Okay, yeah. you, you, we'll see you guys. We'll see you in the photo. All right. <laughs> <laughs> thank you so much, guys. <laughs> okay, thank you. All right.